Hello, Montessorians, and thank you so much for joining us for another Coaching Calls session. Um, Matt is back, and we are starting um, with a continuation of our, our uh, Ideal Montessori website series. And today, we're going to be discussing program-specific content. Cosmo, are you there? Because I can't hear anything. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm still here. Can you guys, did I break out? No, I can hear you now just fine. Okay, awesome. Uh, where did you lose me? Um, you just said we're going to be talking about ideal Montessori website and program spe specific content. That's the last thing. Awesome. Um, and I was just uh, thanking you and Deneen both for being here and in, in, uh, introducing um, I think introducing Deneen for anybody who has yet to meet her. She's our, our new community manager. Um, and we'll And Kasim, you broke up just again, so I'm not hearing anything. We're just working out some technical difficulties. Got it. I think Kasim dropped off. He's getting on a different connection here. Um, if you're still recording, I can uh, talk to everybody about a fantastic trip that I had. Oh, there he is. Fantastic trip to Thailand that I just returned from. I apologize for being gone for the last couple of weeks, but we are ready to start our weekly series again on Thursdays. Kasim, are you there? I am back. So sorry. I think my internet cut out. No problem. Am I still sharing my screen? Nope. Okay, I need to get back there. Apologize to our members. The irony here is that I'm supposed to be the tech savvy one. <laughs> I think we've called you a digital ninja before. So uh, maybe we're going to degrade you to a brown belt based on your performance today. So. <laughs> digital karate kid. Yep. <laughs> okay, trying one more time. All right. There we go. I see a screen. There we are. And we're back. Um, just to recap, we're going over program specific content. We have uh, uh, Matt and Deneen both online. Thank you both so much for being here. And Matt, if you wouldn't mind, can you introduce this topic to us and tell us why it's something that um, you're exceptionally excited to speak about? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I struggled with for a long time. I believe when we are the first incantation of our website, um, we had our head of school write, um, our founding head of school actually write all the content about the pages. And so I had this uh, volumes and volumes of, of uh, pages of information to put up on our site. And it was just too much stuff. Um, it was too descriptive for lack of a better word. Um, and it was too dense in order for people to read online and to really get them to be motivated about Montessori. So, um, when I started making new versions of the site, and like I said, we've had four different sites over the past uh, 11 years, um, we really started to, I really started to think about how do people read websites? How do people read Montessori websites? And what do we need to write about when we're describing our programs that uh, makes people motivated to inquire and tour? So um, I have lived every single, uh, I guess, version of, of Montessori content out there for program descriptions, and I'm really happy to share what's worked for us here in Sacramento uh, with the rest of the NEDO community. And a note for all of our members, we have a special gift um, that we have added to the resources section, and we'll be revealing that um, today at the end of this call, so stick around. Uh, Matt, these are the best practices that you built for creating program-specific content. Can you go through these with us? Sure, absolutely. Uh, just as bullet points here, well, that's actually one of the bullet points. Um, but to start out, um, less is more. So we all have a tendency, I think, to want to write a NAMPT article about each uh, program. And that is a mistake. So we really need to think about um, uh, minimal, 
minimal pro, minimal descriptions in terms of what your programs are to give them a little a little taste of what it is, but you can definitely write too much. And so less is definitely more. Uh, use of bullet points on a website when you are describing your programs, I think is essential, it makes it easier to read. Uh, we will get into that as we start to look at descriptions. Using familiar language. Um, you know, we've talked a lot before about how Montessorians have a tendency to use Montessori jargon in conversations, in marketing pieces and all that stuff. And that is a big no-no. So we wanna make sure we're using language that is familiar to parents, not familiar to Montessori schools. Uh, we want to use age appropriate imagery. This is a really good uh, time to talk about how to get pictures of your classrooms, what type of uh, pictures you wanna use, what are the best types of images to use. I'm sure that'll be a whole other course, but we'll give um, some examples when we're talking about that today. Um, use age specific testimonials. We use testimonials a lot on our website and you wanna make sure that those are specific to the page that you are promoting. Selling the future. So we are always looking for ascension for people. We obviously want every child that enrolls in our uh, infant program, toddler program, primary program, we expect them to enroll in elementary. That doesn't always happen as we know. However, what we wanna do is be talking about that and assuming that in all of the um, written verbiage that we're putting out on the website. And then the final point is making strong use of video. Uh, video is a great um, feature to have when you're talking about Montessori programs, and we're going to go into the uh, examples that we use on our site here in Sacramento. And in fact, I think Deneen's child is in one of these videos. Deneen is a, uh, is, was a guide at our school. Um, Deneen, I believe you're there. She's probably on mute, but her son, Kaysen, is in one of these videos on our website. So um, we will take a look at that. Is that the toddler one? Day in the that's life? The, that's the day in the life of the toddler. Oh, that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so the very first program we're going to be discussing is the infant program. And when we're done going through some of these bullet points, Matt, I will, um, with your permission, toggle over to the Bergamo website so that they can see this in context. But can you explain to us what you did here? Sure. Um, so as, as we know, um, I strongly recommend starting an infant and or toddler program at your school. It's one of the best things we've ever did. Um, gives us an opportunity to have a longer conversation with parents about Montessori that they're not starting at three or three and a half. And then we're immediately talking about staying for the third year of, of primary. Um, it really gives us a, a much longer lead time to build trust and relationships with people. So um, something that we highly recommend that you do or consider. Um, but it is the first step in, in Montessori education. It is, um, if you've never seen uh, uh, an assistance to infancy classroom, they are amazing. The things that are done in that room, um, the level of training and qualification of the guide um, is just really second to none. And there's so many things we can talk about. And I found that most people who are looking into infant programs are either thinking about having a child or are pregnant and, or maybe just had a child. And this is, they are so receptive at this point that, um, that, it's it's actually just just a pleasure to, to to have people read this and write this stuff because they're so receptive to it. So um, you know this really is their their first entree into monastery education for most, if not all of them, and we need to be able to write as such. Cosmo, I don't know if you want to toggle over um, to the site at this point. There we are. So here's our infant program page. Yes. And I will scroll down as you introduce it, Matt. Sure. So, um, well, let me see how we can do this. I think I should probably talk about all aspects of the page. Um, high quality imagery. This is a great example of having high quality imagery. So we have, we are lucky enough to have a school photographer on site. Um, that may not be a reality for a lot of schools, but if you can't afford it, it's something that is um, really, really uh, beneficial for for marketing purposes. This is a great image, right? It shows, um, <laughs> it shows, it shows these, uh, these, these calm, well-adjusted um, infants who are in this really stimulating environment. And um, if you notice, we use a headline for each page and um, a cozy home away from home is really indicative of what happens in, in, uh, in an infant community. So, you know, we're really selling the idea that it's, that it's, um, that it's really the, the next best thing to, um, to, to your house. It's cozy, it's safe. I mean, you're gonna be um, in an environment where the children are loved and, um, and really just well cared for. 
So we have we chose a great image. Um, and then as you see, we also have another thing that I think is important to note is that in all the program descriptions, I actually have the ages listed up there. We make this assumption sometimes when we're writing Montessori websites that people will know what a primary program is. And you have to get away from that. That's a good example of kind of using Montessori jargon um, and assuming that people are going to know what primary means. Primary may mean something completely different to somebody that's overseas, maybe some may mean something different to people that are in different parts of the country. For many people, primary education means elementary school, which is um, which is interesting to note. So I always make sure that I put the ages of the classrooms underneath the headline. So it's very, very clear what age group this is. Um, so we have a quote here that is a testimonial that is from Ann Matthews, who was a parent in an infant program a number of years ago. And if you notice, she was um, she references those things that we're really trying to sell at this age group, which is safe and nurturing um, and the superb teachers um, who are patient, positive and incredibly talented. <clears throat> And always, I would recommend that you use for testimonials your actual name of people. Um, that's you know some people aren't willing to do that, but I think it, it is so much more um, convincing when you're using an actual name of somebody versus you know a parent or whatever that seems so anonymous. So as we scroll down, um, you're going to see a couple things. So each, instead of having long form uh, paragraphs here, which I don't think people are going to read, we use really really heavy use of imagery. And we also use um, uh, a headline with which I'm going to call this a bullet point for lack of a better word. I know we actually don't have a bullet point on here, but this is kind of what I would consider to be um, very akin to a bullet point is we have a very clear headline. So the first thing that we're talking about here is we are doing the benefits of the program. Each one of these pictures and each one of these descriptions is a benefit of the program. So benefit is adults one, children three. We have a, a child teacher to child ratio of one. Uh, adult for every three children in the infant program. That's going to be the number one question. I have found that people will actually ask about these programs and um, rightly so, you know, you have a four month old, you do need a lot of personalized attention to be able to care for their needs. So um, that's what I wrote about um, underneath there. And again, I'm always trying to keep this to about four sentences maximum. There could be a couple of times when I go over that, but I mean, right here, you need to be really succinct with what you're writing. So infants can never have too much love, care and affection. To ensure your child receives personalized attention, our infant program provides one adult for every three children. So really the first thing that we lead with. Um, we're then talking about first everythings. So um, this is you know, such a rapid state of growth for children in this age group. And we really wanna celebrate that, right? We wanna celebrate the fact that um, they're doing all these first things and we're gonna be um, relaying that to parents. We're gonna be celebrating that with parents um, and Again, it's just uh, something that they're already thinking about that we are talking about as a benefit that we're going to be participating with uh, the family and the child in these things. So if you come down here, you're going to see a use of video and you may not be able to hear the video when you click it. Um, this is just a YouTube embed that we've used. Um, and most of these videos will actually were actually done um, their interviews with our Montessori guide. So this is Sarah, who is one of our infant guides. And I found it really effective for these types of pages, for people to be able to see the actual teacher, for to be able to hear her talk, to be able to hear about how um, well trained she is, how motivated she is, how much she loves working with this age group. And it makes it so much more personal than me just telling you. It's actually in this person's words. Um, and I found that that's really, really effective. I would recommend that when you're doing something like this, that you do hire a videographer. Um, just because the level of video um, and audio is going to be higher than you know doing it on your phone or your camera. Although that's not a requirement. If I had to, you know, if that was going to be a, a breaking point between actually having video on your site and not, take the video in any way you can. But if you do have the budget, make sure that you can um, get some professionally recorded videos. It's actually not as expensive as um, as you would think. So scrolling down. Um, we talk about the level of training for um, our infant guides, infant, infant guides particularly here. Um, you know, the training that they receive in the assistance to infancy program, um, at least for AMI, I can speak to specifically, is so robust. And that's something that is a huge benefit because most people's experiences with a childcare program, a preschool for infant, a, uh, uh, some type of daycare program, for lack of a better word, or even a nanny, is that um, you know the person may be nice, but what level of training do they have to be able to work with this age group? And because we're an AMI school, and because I'm really really confident in that training, it's something that we put right out there in terms of um, 
in terms of uh, what what their preparation is. And again, it's, I wrote down here, it's more than a job. Our Montessori teachers have a career of choice because of their love for infants, their interest in Montessori education, and their unwavering commitment to do what is best for children. Uh, peace of mind is another huge thing. I mean, when you have a, an infant and you are leaving them in somebody else's care for the day, they need to make sure that their child is um, is is safe. So this is you know this is going to be much different than when you're talking about elementary, right? People aren't people are concerned about that, but not as concerned as when you have an infant, toddler, or even a primary age child who necessarily can't tell you the things that are happening every day. You have a you know you have a nine year old in a Montessori program. They're going to come home and tell you everything that happened during that day the good and the bad, um, that's not gonna happen with an infant. So what we're really selling is the peace of mind here that we're gonna have a beautiful, safe and clean environment. Uh, we talked about background checks. And again, a lot of these things are kind of obvious to us, but you need to think about what are the most common questions that people are gonna have at this age group about, um, about the program. And then let's, let's put it, you can never be too um, explicit about these types of things. There's another video there with Sarah um, who was our infant guide, and um, it's, again, her talking, but again, she talks about um, how she got into monastery education and her training, so that was a, a nice video to have. This is going to be the age when most children are making their first friends, um, and, you know, it's it's really nice to see a, um, you know, your 14-month-old, your 15-month-old start to develop friendships, and, you know, so we're talking in active language. Picture a group of children excited to see your child when she arrives to deepen growing friendships. Um, huge selling point there. The environments that we have, an environment optimized for your infant. Um, again, huge selling point for uh, Montessori in general, but this specifically for um, the infant program is, you know, this is really from everything from custom floor beds to infant sized shelves to these little tiny tables that we have so that they can start to develop independence is another key selling point. Again, all of these things are benefits. We're thinking about the benefits that um, that this program has for their child. Uh, your child develops trust through consistency. So we talk here about routine. We talk here about the adults that are with them every day and the schedules that they have. Again, a very common question that people will have. And I would just say, again, uh, we have taken thousands of images and these are the best images that we found. Um, and I, you know, it takes some time to go through and sort, but what a, what a lovely image that is, right? If I, if I had an infant and I was looking into programs, I'm immediately, um, drawn into this image um, about this very, very young child with this loving, loving adult here that is um, really sharing the day with them. And then you'll see the final point here is we're talking about, again, I talked about selling the future. Every single one of these pages, the last bullet point here, the last headline is about the next classroom. So it talks about um, at 18 months, this is when the program ends. So in California, we are required to transition children up to a toddler program at 18 months. Um, and this is what we start talking about. And it's important here, if you notice, we have a link um, where it says toddler classroom, where they can click on that and it takes them to the toddler page um, so that they can kind of do these things in order. Awesome, thank you for that, Matt. One thing I just wanted to comment on, is I think you've done such an amazing job at making sure the site is responsive to mobile devices and it speaks to your bullet point paradigm because when you're on a smartphone, it engages just as well as it would on a desktop, as you see here. Um, oh, yeah. Well, and I don't have those numbers in front of me, but I mean, I it, I know that it's significant, the number of people that are, um, you know, their first um, visit to our site is on a mobile device. So having a mobile responsive website is um, not only good, it's essential because if, I, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been on a website on your phone that's not mobile responsive, it's, I mean, I just click off of it because you can't even read it. So um, really something that's important to have. I think more than half of your traffic now is mobile if you, if you count um, tablets as mobile devices. Wow, interesting. Awesome, so we're on to the next program, which is uh, uh, Toddler, and we'll toggle yeah. over to the website as well, but um, if you don't mind, let's cover some of the best practices first. Sure. One of the things that I wanted to point out, too, is that all these images that you see, you see this kind of sketch drawing of um, of the children costume. If you go back to our homepage real quick, if you could open that up as another tab, potentially. I just wanted to talk about that. Um, so that's something that's really, really easy to do. It's This is on our homepage. And when there we go. When we were looking at 
how we were going to be presenting the programs, I really wanted to show faces of children because, you know, studies, myriad of studies have shown that people are really, really responsive to faces, especially in images. And so I wanted to make sure that I had um, uh, a, a, an image of a child's face that was indicative of that age group. But then rather than just showing a picture, I thought this would be really nice if it looked like it was a sketch. All that is, is there's, you know, there's, there's, I think I did this in Picasso, um, but there's a number of different programs that'll take an image and it'll make it look like a sketch. So I thought it was a nice touch to be able to invite people to click on that link because they can immediately look at it. And it looks a little bit more custom than um, kind of a, a basic image. So that was free to do. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and I would encourage other people to do it as well. And Matt, this is tangential, but I think applicable to what you just said, as far as people responding to faces, yours is the only school I've ever seen that shows a picture of your admissions director and then speaks to her specifically uh, with the prompt to schedule a tour, which might be why your tour is your tour called action is so successful. I would absolutely agree with that. I, I it was really, you know, Sylvia is a lovely person. And I, you know, as soon as people meet her, they like her and they like our school. And I, I was thinking, well, we need to make this instead of it being anonymous, and you're right, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of other schools do this, and, and there's there's no barrier to entry to doing this. Take a picture of your admissions director and put his or her face out there so they can see who they're meeting with, right? This is a real person on the other side of this website that's waiting to talk to you, and please do schedule a tour with me, with Sylvia, right? Um, and then all of the follow-up stuff, they, are, they automatically have a, an image in their mind about who this is, as opposed to it being kind of a just a random person that they don't really know. I think Absolutely. So if, I, if you don't mind me chiming in, um, when they come to your tour, they know who to look for. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's a familiar face right away. Yep. Absolutely. And quite honestly, we could probably do a better job at this in all of our follow up stuff as well. I know that Sylvia in her um, in the footer of her emails in her signature, she has her image as well, which I asked her to do. But in all of our automated stuff, that's something that we should probably add. Um, is her image as well, so that everything when it's come from her, that they can associate the face with the name. I think that's a great idea. I'm going to add that to my list of tools for webinars. Right, so going back to our web page here, um, you know, a lot of these things. So listen, for, for toddler, uh, I think a lot of what you're competing against at this point necessarily isn't, you know, for, for infants, it's mostly about nannies that we're competing with. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. No problem. Uh, we're, we're competing against nannies a lot for, for in the infant market. Um, for toddler, I think most people are starting to look at things like daycare. I know daycare is a terrible word. I don't use that word. I hate that word. And I bristle when people use that word with regards to our school. But the reality is, is that that's what people are thinking about. When parents think about daycare, right? What am I doing? So we need to be able to, again, use language that they're using. I don't think that I'm using that word specifically daycare, but I'm talking about aspects of that, right? The care for their child, um, what's going to happen during the day when they're working, because, you know, most people, that's going to be a significant need for them um, when they're when they're going back to work. And that's going to be as opposed to something like primary, you know, most people are interested in early childhood education at that point. Toddler, it's going to be a big motivation is going to be what's happening with my child when I'm going back to work. toggle over to our toddler website just so we can sure. see again another great image that's maria she's one of our toddler guides who uh um such a pleasure to work with people that are well trained and love this age group i could never do toddler i could never ever ever do toddler every time i walk into that classroom i'm like after you know 10 minutes it's uh it's just so busy and you have to have the right temperament in order to do it. And I'm really lucky to be able to work with people that, that love that age group. So um, again, great image. You have a child concentrating, a child um, really learning those those uh, gross and fine motor skills in this and somebody, um, an adult there that's just really, really excited to be with, uh, with this child. So um, again, another applicable quote, there is a transformation that happens in the toddler classroom. It really is the bridge between um, uh, there's so much independent skills that independence skills that is developed at this age group. Um, it really is transformative. Not that other aspects of Montessori are not transformative, but this is going to be one of the most obvious transformations that occurs in the child. So um, one of the things I didn't mention on the other pages is that um, I do have kind of an inter introductory paragraph or you know, a couple sentences there at the beginning before I get into my bullet points. Um, and I talked about the terrible twos. That's a great example of using language that is familiar with parents. 
that is a kind of a, a phrase that's out there in the vernacular about, you know, oh gosh, you know, terrible twos. My child was so challenging at this age group. And, um, you know, we're using that. We're, we're using something that they recognize and we're saying, you know what, we, we, we disagree. Toddlers are terrific. So a good example of using language that other people are going to be already be using to our advantage. So again, great image. Help me do it myself. Obviously, independence is a huge, um, a huge uh, thing in a toddler environment um, specifically. Um, so we talked a little bit about what independence looks like at this age group. Um, whether that is, uh, you know, using a miniature broom, whether that's using uh, taught this, the skills of self-care and toilet training, again, a huge thing that happens in a toddler environment. So um, we definitely talk about that, and it's going to be a, a concern of parents. So that's a, a benefit that we're talking about here. Casa, maybe you can scroll down um, and go down to the day in the life video. Um, Would you like me to play this one? There we go. Yeah. So if you just press play on that, um, this was something that I found was really effective and it's another, it's again, it's a good use of video. Um, and all this is is just images that was imported into uh, a YouTube movie. You know, it's, it's not difficult to do YouTube. It's very user friendly now. And this is basically just a day in a life. So instead of having, you know, a, a section of the site that said, you know, here's our daily schedule for the day. I wanted to show, by the way, that's Kaysen. That's Deneen's son right there with the blonde curls. Um, I really wanted to show what it looks like. And so um, this took me, I don't know, three or four hours to do. Thankfully, we had great images. I had our, our photographer go in and take images throughout the day. You know, side note, it doesn't have to be exactly what occurs. I mean, I, I can't tell you that this happened at 8.41 a.m. There's a, there's a little bit of a story here, but I, am I, I know for a fact that this is the stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis um, in this classroom. Um, so again, I think I use this at... Um, this is on our primary page as well. I haven't done one for elementary yet, but I, I probably should, and I probably should do one for infant as well. But I've, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about this video. Um, and again, it's really, it's free to do besides the pictures. Um, and you could even take the pictures yourself. So um, Costa, maybe you could put that down as, as, as some type of course we should do in the future about how to create something like this. That's a great call. That's a great call. And so even when people have questions about kind of the schedule of the day, rather than, you know, just writing them a dry email with kind of um, a list of what they do, you know, sending them a link to this video so they can see it is so much more effective. And it's really been effective on this site as well. And Nicole just mentioned that she loves the idea of using um, video photos, um, which is great. I mean, as a, as a parent that was enrolling Kaysen into this program, it was so beneficial to know kind of what was going to happen throughout the morning, even outside of my observation. So um, I would agree, Nicole, this is, this is gold right here. Yeah, no, thanks for that. And it was, you know, you have to be able to find um, parents that are willing to have their child highlighted like this. Most people are nowadays. It's not, you know, back in, back in the day in the early 2000s, people were a little bit more cautious about things like that. But in 2018, all of our, you know, we're much more comfortable being online. So um, you know, find those parents who are willing to um, let us use their child's name and image um, and, then, and then put it out there. So the rest of the page is, is very, very similar. Again, we're talking about bullet points at each, um, benefits at each, at each, each, at each um, picture here. Um, you know, we talk about exploration and to be a toddler, to be curious. Again, I would say, if you'll notice, no more than four sentences really brevity is your friend with these types of things. So what I did is, is, you know, we wrote this and then I just edited heavily and how can I express this in less words um, was really my challenge. And, and editing is, is really an important part of the process when you're, when you're writing these things. So again, at the bottom, I have a very, very old toddler. In fact, I think she's almost three in this image um, because I wanted to again, set the stage where we're ready to move up somewhere between the ages of two and a half to three, um, the child's going to move up to primary. And then the link is right there for the primary environment. And the primary best practices have grown uh, quite a bit compared to the others. Why is that, Matt? How come primary requires so much more context here? Well, I mean, there's so much more. This is a, gosh, maybe Deneen should talk about this as the, as the trained Montessori. And there's so much more that happens in this, in this classroom, just in terms of brain development, in terms of things that they're exposed to. 
I mean, it, with toddlers, we're talking mostly about independence and getting them ready to be independent for a primary environment. But in here, I mean, it's a, it's a three-year mixed-age classroom. There's so much more that happens. Janine, do you have any comment about that? Um, I just, the three, yeah, I would agree. The three to six-year-old um, age range, there's just such a gamut of what they get to experience. Um, also, that isn't, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but that typically is where you get a lot of inquiry as well. Um, so if you don't get somebody at infant or toddler, they're going to also inquire about the three to six. Uh, am I right on that? Great point. Great point. I never even thought about that. Um, I, I would also, go ahead. Um, I did want to mention, Nicole had a question. How do you handle photo permissions with families? Great question. Um, so in our enrollment agreement, we have uh, a release that is part of the enrollment agreement. So we have, we're going to assume that we can always post a child's image on social media, that we can always um, you know, use it in our emails. And there's about, uh, gosh, maybe 2% of our families choose to opt out of that. But rather than asking them to opt in and have to go out and get separate releases for every child, it's just part of our enrollment agreement. I'm happy to share that with the group um, if they wanted to be able to put that in their enrollment agreement, because it's just so much easier um, to do. Now, that's just for basic social media stuff. For stuff that's going to be on a website or in an advertisement, I always will go and ask specifically, right? I'm not going to use a child's image and name, you know, specifically when we're promoting the school um, in a, in kind of a in a marketing way, um, without their explicit permission. But again, one of the benefits of having that release already done is that all we have to do is get a. I could even get their their verbal release when they're picking up from school. It's hey, can we use this? We don't have to have them sign something that's different. One of the things uh, to, to follow up with Cossum, Cossum's point about there's so much more information here is that there's also way more competition at this level, right? There's so many different methods that exist now for preschool, whether that's Waldorf, whether that's play-based, whether that's all these proprietary you know, preschool programs that exist. So this is something that's actually, it's a benefit to talk more about, um, for lack of a better word, curriculum type things. I know we don't use that in Montessori, but that would be a, a term that I think, um, you know, parents and educators would use. So we're talking a lot more about that. And you'll see the headline here is developing a love for learning. That's an oft used expression in Montessori. But again, I put that right out there. Um, again, what our purpose is for the headline. And then also um, the age group there is, is there again. Great. And just um, a side note, Nicole mentioned um, that she would love to see the language that you use for um, permission. So awesome. Make that available. That'd be great. Happy to do that. Matt, if you share that with me, I will add that to our resources section in the members area. So everybody okay. can access to it and download it. Sure. Yeah. It'll just be a copy of our enrollment agreement. Um, probably wouldn't be a bad thing for other people to see. Our, our enrollment agreement, just for context, is uh, longer. <laughs> than I've seen other schools be. And um, sometimes I do have to go in and explain there's some legalese in there, right? We're in California, which tends to be, I guess, more of a litigious state than others. Um, but use that you know, as you will. You don't have to use every single aspect that we use in our enrollment agreement um, at your school. So we initially lead off here with the fact that this is a mixed age classroom. That's going to be the biggest difference, I think, that most people aren't aware of. And so I want to put that first right it's a three to six year old classroom and it's a mixed age classroom so there's going to be five and six year olds in this environment and what are the benefits of this your younger child learns by observing the behavior and activities of the older children your older child gains self-confidence leadership skills and responsibility by setting an example for her younger friends a side point here you know there are named articles there are articles online that will go on and on and on and on about this which are important articles right but what benefit would that have to put that on this page? People would not read past the fourth line. So we're giving them a little tease, a taste of it. And then when they actually come and tour, we can talk about that more in detail. Um, and that's something that I think is, is, best, um, is best seen in person. And Sylvia talks a lot about that in her tours. And again, we're setting an expectation for the fact that this is a three-year program and the fact that we expect you to stay for the kindergarten year. Um, so that's that. Uh, we talked about the gift of choice, um, which is uh, basically independent activity by choosing to explore, repeat it, and perfect it. That's Montessori 101, right? Um, but again, we're just giving them a little, a little taste of it. And what a great image, right? You see a child choosing to paint by herself, and you see the other child at the end uh, with, uh, with the bells. And just that image right there, 
it speaks to, I, I just, all I think about is, is free choice when I see that. And I'm a Montessorian, right? So it's, it, that picture really calls to me. Um, when I was choosing that, I remember being really excited that I was able to find that, that image. Um, just about every page that we have is gonna talk about the connection between the teacher and the child, but we're gonna talk about it in different ways. Um, you know, this is the first time that there's a, that there's a three year um, relationship, right? Because infant and toddler are not three year programs. But in elementary and primary, they are. And so we really heighten that up. I mean, a huge benefit is the fact that, you know, this, this Montessori guide gets to know your child um, very well over the course of three years, as opposed to having a new teacher every year when they're three, four, and then five. Um, we have, again, the day in the life of a uh, primary program. Costume, you could play that. It's a little bit separate, a little bit different than um, the primary one. We don't have to go through the whole thing. Um, but uh, again, I found this pretty effective um, <laughs> highlighting uh, a three-year-old and a five-year-old here um, from the day. Interesting note that child just graduated um, from the primary program as a six-year-old. And so it's funny to see her look so young at this point, but um, that's what happens. Anyway, so costume, we could scroll off of that because uh, it's really the same format. Um, group activities and play. I mean, he, he, listen. Sometimes people criticize Montessori by thinking that it's too, ironically, that it's that it's too structured and that there's no time for children to play. And we really want to make it clear that you know there are times for group activity. There are times that they go out in the playground and have you know, uh, run around really, um, and and, ha and have outdoor time. So we really wanted to put that um, put that out as a as a bullet point. Um, one size does not fit all. We're talking about individualization of curriculum and children learning um, according to their ability, not necessarily their age. I love this image down by Essential Sills for a Successful Life because you have this five-year-old that is holding this you know, young two-and-a-half-year-old child, and that really speaks to the community that we're trying to develop here. I, I, I loved having that, that picture. And then we talk about kindergarten at the end um, and... You know, that's one of the things that you have to repeat again and again at the primary level is the fact that this is a three year program. Um, this, this actually is a little bit more than four sentences, if you notice, um, but uh, maybe I could truncate that a little bit more. And then we have the link for elementary from six to 12. And our elementary best practices. This is something that I found. Um, all the videos on here are going to be of one of our elementary guides because she's just a really, um, she's really great at talking about um, elementary, and her passion is just evident. Um, listen, as I've talked about before, we don't we don't promote elementary um, for people from the outside a whole lot. We do enroll from time to time somebody from the public, but it's really you know we're relying on ninety. 95% of our children are coming up from our primary program. So this is something that's almost internal marketing, right? This is something that we can send out to parents that are, uh, have children that are four, have children that are five, so that they can start to think about, um, you know, when they're moving up to elementary, what that's going to be like. Um, and if you click onto our site, we can show you what some of the things that that looks like. So again, great headline, learning how to think. Um, I, I'm going to, most of these things, these phrases on here, of course, I did not create that, um, but it's it's kind of in the Montessori space um, um, that I think is an effective um, term. Same thing as enlightened generalist, right? As you scroll down, um, you start to see um, learning without limits. That's another one. That's another great one um, that I think is a benefit that's used in Montessori space, but it's not Montessori jargon. That's actually that's actually a good example of something that's Montessori. It's a Montessori concept that is then put into clear language that people can understand. So learning without limits really speaks to this idea that the children can work at their own pace and work as fast or slowly as, as they need to. And, you know, for me talking about four sentences, I'm looking at this now. And then on the elementary page, <laughs> we're averaging about six sentences. So uh, I'm not always perfect, as you can see. Um, but uh, I think that I think that it is pretty well written. And again, I would say that I would say that most people, um, this is probably one of the least visited pages on our site because we're not necessarily recruiting for people um, on here. 
So it's not as important, I think, as infant, toddler, or primary. So all of these videos are of Wendy Tai. Um, interesting point too about the videos. If you look at those those um, those screenshots that are used for the videos, those are custom screenshots that you can do in YouTube. And what I did is 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 create a template in a program called Canva. I believe we have a course on Canva available that I then uploaded as the thumbnail. So it was very clear, instead of just having one of those freeze frame images that YouTube will automatically put up there, you can put a custom thumbnail, which is what I did for all of these things, um, that each one of those is really a benefit on its own, right? Alumni are prepared for life. So Wendy in this video is talking about um, our alumni and her experience over the past 20 years about what happens when children graduate from her classroom. As you can tell, we did all the video recording on one day in the same environment, but um, it turned out pretty well. Matt, I don't know if you feel like this will be applicable, but we've had a lot of success um, reaching out to film schools. Because film really? students tend to have, um, they have access to a significant amount of equipment and um, they, they're also really creative and motivated. So it's not gonna be quite the same quality as a professional production house, but for schools that don't have that budget, um, you know, if you have a, a local community college with a film program, that's worth looking into. Videography can can really vary according by price, and it's kind of hard to be able to know. Well, really, what should I be charged for this? So that's a great that's a great suggestion. Wish I would have known that. <laughs> yes. Sir. Awesome. So that ends um, kind of the breakdown of the program information. Um, I wanted to mention that we have. Um, we've added uh, a resource to our resources section. We have pre-written content for each of these programs as well as summer content. Um, it's going to be live by end of day today. If you go to the resources section uh, for our second, third, and fourth plane members, um, we'll have an icon here that um, says website content, and you'll be able to access all of that templated content. You'll want to customize it for your school, of course, um, but it's available to you uh, to use as long as you're as long as you're a member. And it's a great, it's actually a great way of just starting the process, right? Even if you just use it as notes for things to talk about, or just even if you just pick out key phrases that you like, it's a great way to get started. Listen, I've been there where you're looking at a blank, you know, a blank word document and you're thinking, oh, I've got to write. And that is a panic inducing for some of us, at least for me, I can talk about, right? Where I'm like, gosh, I got to write all this stuff. And you're feeling that pressure about, you know, we have to, we need to, do something about our website, our website, you know, the webmaster is waiting for this to post. So even if you use it just as, as, a, as a starting resource, I think it's a great way to just get the wheels churning about um, how to describe your programs. Do we have any questions from our, our, our live members um, on this topic or, or any topic, um, but content specifically? And while we're waiting for that, I just want to remind everybody that we'll be doing these coaching calls every Thursday. Um, it's 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And um, Matt will be joining us and walking us through his Montessori marketing method. Well, I like that. Did, did we trademark that, Cossum? Because I think we I, should. I own the domain name. <laughs> That's a Montessori <laughs> marketing method. That's a, it's a little bit ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I would um, I would say that one of the when we were looking at how we were going to be doing these calls, rather than having, you know, um, a master class where we're talking about building a Montessori website, making this bite size where you're going to get a little tiny bit each time, and we can talk more about the aspects of each because there's so many things that go into a a Montessori website that converts into tours. Right, that is the goal of our site. We're not trying to sell people on Montessori by the website. We're trying to get them interested. So they raise their hand and they say, yes, I'm willing to either give you my email address or I'm willing to come in for a tour. Both of those things are wins for us because the more we have of those, I ultimately know that's going to convert eventually to more uh, applications that come in. So really looking at your website as not trying to get them, you know, we're not trying to get married based on this website. We're trying to get a first date and um, think of your website that way. And that's really the purpose of our, of our calls um, once a week to break down the individual aspects of that that will make that happen. And just as a remind, reminder to our members, I'll be adding all of the resources that we discussed today, um, the uh, enrollment form and the image release, um, as well as the, the content that we referenced on our website. 
And if we don't have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, I think that uh, we're pretty safe to sign off. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Good evening as well. You're welcome. I look forward to talking to everybody next week. Sounds good. We'll see you all next Thursday. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.